thank you. Does this work? We're good? All right, let's go. We're going to talk about uh, steel strings, guitars, as opposed to classical guitars and why they don't sound like banjos. Started uh, about in the 1600s, uh, and you're going to see a little bit of history and then how th things are put together and uh, how you get that mellow harp-like tone. So, as we go. This is uh, what they looked like 400 years ago. Uh, these are fancy collections in a museum. Uh, all of those strings are doubled except the treble string because that's the loudest string on the instrument. They're squeaky little guys and they stay in the museum and the instrument had to evolve from here. On the upper left is the grandfather of the mandolin. We all have kind of strange Baroque relatives. The bottom left is the uh, Neapol Neapolitan mandolin. Uh, and that's, a, that's a lute. Uh, and over on the right is the uh, Spanish guitar. It's getting a little bit bigger. It still has double strings everywhere except on the treble. But in 1650, they invented a way to make a heavy string by wrapping it. If you take a look at the upper left, you can see the guts of a cello. The cello and the piano were new instruments. The cello flexes around the bass bar, that's a hinge, and there's a sound post that pushes the back in and out. The bass notes are so low that both these instruments pump the sound out the hole. The C note coming out of the cello is 17 feet long. It moves kind of like a taxi driver tailgating on the way home from the airport. <laughs> the guitar catches up, it's, it's 14 feet. If you tune it down to D, it would be 16 feet. If these were in a pond, in the woods, the, the female frogs would still like the guitar with that bass note. <laughs> on the upper left is the nylon guitar. You can see how it's got fan bracing. On the bottom right, then, is an invention brought to this country in the 1850s by C.F. Martin uh, from Germany. And there's one of his first guitars called Parlor Instrument, rather quiet. But well, we learned that bigger is louder, and the guitar had to compete with all the brass instruments, and it went to The, the foreman at Martin gave it a try with a trapezoidal instrument that's huge. The gypsy folks, and they're playing right now in Northampton, uh, developed a guitar. It sounds like a banjo. But we have also metal guitars. It looks like a Volkswagen hubcap on the inside. And here's two guys down at the Starving Artist. Note that the guitar can keep up with the trumpet. So louder is better, and it turns out that thinner is louder and bigger is louder, and we're going to see what happens. That's how the guitar is built. It is made out of thin wood. Uh, this man is using a sander then to thin the sides down, and on the bottom right-hand side you can see uh, East Indian rosewood being bent on a pipe at about 285 degrees to shape it uh, into that uh, set. Um, Christian Frederick Martin was not allowed to join the Violin Guild because he was a cabinet maker, and sure enough, there it is. It's clamped inside a frame exactly like a cabinet. The neck is put together separately, and parts are attached to this instrument. It has a certain space or volume to it and a small hole, and that gives it a jukebox kind of bass that's built in. We've put the back on it here. The back is very thin. It's a very light instrument and it is slowly coming together and the, uh, most of the obsession takes place with the, uh, the spruce wood that goes into the top and you're going to see a picture of that next. This is a homemade sander and the, the folks that are building this guitar are adjusting that by shaking it, tapping it, listening to it and they will control the thickness of that thing down to two or three thousandths of an inch. And they, they obsess and like I said, thinner is louder. We're going to find out uh, what can go wrong. This is Martin's uh, internal design that he brought from Germany. You see the X shape to it. And this is what, on that large dreadnought guitar named after a battleship, uh, this is what the bracing on the inside would look like. And they spend a lot of time working on this. It has to do something very um, complicated. It has to hold the 200 pound force from the strings without twisting. And the bottom picture shows a guitar that is twisting. There's a hole in front of the bridge and a bulge behind it. And you're going to see in the next picture what happens when things go wrong. So it's a paradoxical thing. It has to jump up and down like a trampoline and yet not fall over or come apart. So here's a warranty claim. And you can, and you can, see, and you can see part of that four-inch hole that pumps out the deep bass. 
So the secret, and it took hundreds of years to figure this out, is to tune the top of the guitar to, to F below middle C, the back of the guitar, a half a note higher to F sharp, and you get the, what you see at the bottom here, they move opposite each other and pump a deep bass note out of the instrument. And it is possible to take a small guitar and have the bass notes be the largest, loudest thing of all. So Martin's X brace features what you, the vibration, the trampoline type motion you see in the upper left. And here is some of the obsessive attention that is put into it. 90% of the sound comes off the soundboard of the instrument, except for what's pumped out the hole. And 90% of the uh, stress and energy goes into shaping this stuff you know, very carefully. These are some of the tools that are used. And if you're going to work by hand, you're going to need a nice workbench. I showed that. But these are planes going from 22 inches long to tiny little things for those of us who reach in the sound hole and adjust things. You'll see some carving knives. You'll see a tool for cutting the binding and then a tool for cutting the hole. In the center there was the Sitka spruce. Uh, on, the, on the right was a wood used in archery. This is a Martin 00 size that I'm building now that you see on the right. The, the loudest note on that guitar is on the bass string. It's, it's a, a G. And uh, I build three different sizes. The dreadnought, which is what Martin invented in 1916, it has a different voice. Here's my color consultant. Uh, I'm missing half a chromosome, I'm sorry. And uh, I want to recommend, since guitars are, artisan guitars are better than factory guitars, I want to recommend Sauve Guitars in North Adams, 121 Union Street, and John Osthoff in Beckett.